Hey there, welcome to another edition of First and Ten with Rams coach Joe Prudhomme. I'm Jimmy the St. Christopher. It was a thriller in the Sonoran Desert last Saturday night as the Rams lost to Ottawa, Arizona, 42 to 38, back and forth game. Coach, take us through that last play, the Isom to Rick's pass down near the goal line with just a few seconds left. Yeah, it was, uh, we actually drove 86 yards in a minute and I think 15 seconds, which I thought was pretty outstanding with one timeout. <clears throat> Got ourselves in position, about, about a 25, 27 yard throw, put up a, a fade ball to uh, Ricks. He out jumps the DB, uh, comes down, both feet in bounds. The guy brushes him with a hand as he goes out of bounds. Right about, I mean, we thought he scored because he, his foot hits a pylon, but the ball has to cross. So, right, you know, that, right. so, but at least, so you see clearly on the clock on the film, there's four seconds left. So we're getting ready to get our play. And, and I think everybody in the stadium, anybody that was watching the game knew Donovan Isom was going to go with a quarterback sneak because we had converted four of them throughout the game for longer yards. Um, and then all of a sudden, I look up and the clock's at one second, uh, and then we get ball into play, and they start, they start a clock before we even snapped it, um, which I don't quite understand because it's supposed to start on the snap. Um, there was a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, their coach was down there. Nesbitt was down there, I, I guess, you know, helping them, encourage them to make the call that uh, ended up happening. But I don't think that really had anything to do with it. They, they blocked that stuff out. He was excited. We were excited. Everybody was, you know, going nuts. Uh, but, it, um, you know, then they said that his momentum had been stopped inbounds after the first thing they told me was yes we're going to put the time on the clock you got one net play i'm like all right here we go we're going to do it and then within 10 seconds he runs by and says ball game and and as he's jogging by tells me his momentum was stopped before he got out of bounds i said that's not the case and it's really all i got out before he was gone so heartbreaker but we should have won the game a lot earlier right right you know we had chances so now, do you appeal to anybody on that, like the officials? Yeah, or the officials the league, have already, or? they've got it. They know what happened. Um, they've already, you know, they've already gone through it with me, and they agree with that particular call. Uh, but there were some other calls along the way, too. And um, overall, I thought the officiating was great, you know, all night until that last moment. But that's human error. Uh, but, yeah, they've already, they've already seen the tape, and they've already, they're going to take corrective measures, try to help that crew to get better or whatever. doesn't help us. Right. Um, but it's a learning moment for everybody. So, how much did you guys prove that you weren't an O and two team? Oh, I don't. I mean, th that that whole thing to me is so subjective. Who you play in non conference and who you don't play in non conference. Um, you know, us playing the teams that we played, it really helped us get ready for that ball game. I mean, the the, the level of athleticism we'd been facing was so high. Uh, you know, that Ottawa is a very athletic team. I mean, they're a really really good athletic team. But it wasn't what we had played the weeks before. Right. So it kind of, you know, iron sharpens iron, as it were. Uh, it helped us a lot. So I don't, I don't put a lot of stock into the non-conference. I do put stock into who you play in non-conference and if it gets you ready or not. Congratulations, by the way, to Trey Jackson, to mm -hmm. Elijah Hall, and to David Allen. They were the players of the week on offense, yep. defense, and special teams. And, yep. boy, Trey Jackson, he had a career game just mm -hmm. in that one game. What did you see out of him? He was and the there. offensive line for blocking. Oh, I thought he did a great job. Offensive line did a great job. They had so many stunts going and so many different blitzes and looks, and our guys did a great job of picking it up. And, and Trey did a fantastic job of running the ball. I mean, he's got great speed. Um, but he's also tough, and he was breaking tackles, and uh, he was really maximizing. I mean, he tried to jump over some guys, which we had to discourage, say, hey, look, man, that's a long fall down, so don't do that. But he came in, stepped up, and was outstanding. Elijah Hall caused a fumble as well as had a pick. Uh, that's pretty good for a freshman uh, who's only been playing football for a couple of years. He was a basketball kid. Mm. Uh, David Allen uh, punted, flipped the field for us. Uh, you know, he's punting for Blazer right now, and just, I mean, they all three had really good games. And pass defense, boy, he held up a collar. Their quarterback was third in the NAIA and mm -hmm. like average, and he had, what, 176 yards mm -hmm. somewhat? Yeah, the pass defense was outstanding. You know, we, we had a real good idea what to look for. We, get, we blew, I think, two or three coverages. One allowed a touchdown. Another allowed a big-time uh, third-down completion. And if we stop that, we quite possibly get to run out the clock. Um, but uh, their run game, I mean, they put their run game together and showed some things that we hadn't seen. Um, and we were a little behind as far as getting – our kids to line back up like we wanted them to, but no, the pass defense was great. So how much does that help? They had over 300 yards running, as you said. How much does that help now for future games to go back and look at that tape and say, like you just said, here's what we need to do right 
or correct or here's what we did wrong. Well, we already had a lot of that in place. It just didn't get communicated out, you know, amongst once you got the call out because they were going pretty fast to get the call out for it to, to be relayed. Um, we didn't adjust fast enough on the field itself. The calls were going in. It just didn't get communicated quickly enough. And that's something we got to work on. But I don't want to say it helps you because, man, that hurt. But, uh, but it was, um, you know, yeah, it, it'll help us get ready for future games. But they, they made some good adjustments, and, and uh, that's how it went. We're with Coach Joe on first and ten. And speaking of future games, the September road trip, the wild road trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget what you guys look like at home. It's been so long since yeah, last uh, November, since mm -hmm. the, the last home game. Next up, you go to Arkansas to Batesville to play the Lions Scots. How do they look? They're good. I mean, they've got a really solid ball club. They're very physical on defense. Uh, they, they swarm well to the ball. They've got, uh, they brought in some really good looking kids on offense. Um, their pass game is good. They've got, they've got a, a nice balance to it. Good screen team. Um, and of course their kicker is outstanding. You know, he's, uh, he, I think he was all conference last year, the first team or second team. Uh, and he can go, I mean, he can punt and kick. And so they're a really complete team. Um, but we're, you know, we, we feel good about it. On offense, who do they have on offense that stands out? Oh, they got the quarterback. Uh, they got a new kid, number one, um, and then uh, 13 is, or 18 is really, really good. Two's back. Uh, I haven't looked at all the names. I've just been going off the numbers. I've been watching because I watch both sides and special teams. Uh, but those guys are electric, man. They, they're big and they're physical and, and they got some speed. So You talked about their defense linebacker Sam Taylor and defensive lineman Kareem Warren. And you talked about their overall defense. Now, with two guys like that, so Taylor has been sack player of the week three times already, Warren once. Is that, I don't want to say easier, but is that better for prep when you have a guy like that that stands out and say, okay, this is the guy we need to, to focus on? Yeah, you want to stop those guys. You, gotta, you can't let them dictate the game. Um, but you've got to be careful you don't give them too much attention or turn everybody else loose. Uh, but those guys can go, man. They, um, they get to the quarterback. They, they move well really strong, great, uh, you know, great pass rush moves, and, and they shed blockers really well. So it's going to be a challenge for us. You know, we, we started three true freshmen on offense out in Arizona, and they did a really good job. Now they're going to play some, even, you know, some more guys that are seasoned up and experienced, and um, that's a battle we have to win. We have to win at the line of scrimmage. They have an inspirational story. Chris Sweet, their offensive line coach and their OC, mm -hmm. is fighting cancer. He hopes to have that defeated by the end of this year. How inspirational is that for a club? They all went and shaved their heads at the beginning of the yeah. season. So does that, does that help a lot? Does that inspire a lot? It's inspirational, but boy, it's so sad. Um, it, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're tight with your kids and your family and uh, we all spend so much time together, it's uh, when somebody hurts, everybody hurts. And uh, you know, we're praying for Chris and, and, and uh, for his recovery, his family. And, um, but yeah, it, it gives them an inspirational rallying point. But, you know, you don't ever wish that on anybody. Well, we'll send positivity out for you and your coaching staff and, yeah. and the Rams as you head to Batesville. And yeah. good luck on Saturday night, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Talk to you next week on First and Ten.